one of the things that I really like about this interview that you're about to hear is there's actually this weird theme that developed um, throughout the course of the conversation. So when Suzanne and I had our initial pre-call, and you've heard me talk about these, they're supposed to be 15 or 20 minutes, and oftentimes they go on for an hour or two because writers are like that, particularly when you connect with somebody. And Suzanne and I just had a hoot on our call. And so I was looking forward to the conversation, but many times what happens is that that pre-call, which is sort of free flowing, turns into something a little more structured when you're doing an interview. It's just the way people are. It happens like whatever. And like two minutes in to the interview and you'll hear, um, I, we had been talking about Emily Giffen, who I love and just sort of offhandedly, I refer to it as chick lit because that is the sort of general moniker under which these things are oftentimes talked about. And it was just shorthand for me, right? Like it, it was not, I read all different kinds of genres. I don't actually like sort of labeling things and that stuff. And she like stopped and she, well, we're going to have a conversation about that, it, it, which we did. And I told her at the end, I was like, oh, that's, this is staying in because we continued to reference the conversation that we had about words and definitions and sort of things that like you say offhandedly that may land differently with other people and the ways in which you have to accept that and the ways in which you grow and learn and, and, and try to deal with mistakes that you make in real time. And I told her at the end, I'm like, well, I think it's important that this stays in because it in some way models the kind of discussion that you should be able to have about these things. Right. And if I say something that upsets you, it doesn't matter if I mean it to be upsetting or if I didn't mean it with any intent, like that's not how communication works, right? Like there's, there's a loop, there's a feedback mechanism in communication. And so you have to be able to take those things in and respond as well as you can, because that encourages other people to, or shows other people that there's a safe, this is a safe way to have these conversations, which again, if you've listened to the program, you've heard lots of folks talking about, the exhaustion of having to carve those spaces out for people that look and sound like me, right? For white folk. And so it was just such a refreshing conversation. And then it sort of reverberated through everything that we did. And so it, and you don't know this, but for me, they were two radically different conversations, right? Like the first one was this pre-call of like, oh my God, we have so much in common. And then the second one was this interview with this through line that was just so fascinating to me. And, and I think it was to her as well. And it's what I love about the program, right? Because you get to have all of these different experiences with all of these writers. You are hearing this passively, but for me, it's an active thing, right? And I love those opportunities because it, in that opportunity of sort of discussion of language, and uh, sort of not thinking about language and the damage that that can cause. And, or even if it's supporting other structures and you don't realize you're doing that, like this is one of those gifts that you get to like come out of this. And when I say you, I mean me come out of this, like with a, with an awareness that I didn't have before. Certainly I know the discussion around uh, that shorthand of, of, um, fiction or writing that is done by women that is sort of pigeonholed as like by women for women, which is just not my experience with literature. That is not the way I um, read. That is not the way. If you listen to the show, you know, like we have, you know, a fair amount of women on this program, more than men. So I sometimes forget that that is that doesn't make the conversation around things like I'm putting this in quotes, chick lit, that doesn't make that less angering to people that have been put into that hole because that is not the way they experience that sort of at large in the world. So anyway, it is sort of an aside almost to the conversation that you're going to hear, except I just re-listened to the program and we, we sort of kept referencing back to that beginning of the conversation, which just so rarely happens because, you know, the jam is really, we, we're going through people's lives. And this one felt like more of a thematic discussion about the ways in which language lands and the importance of that and not even just in writing, right? Like in the ways in which we move through the world. And then as Hafiza Jeter said on our program, 
um, when she was talking about, you know, correcting people, particularly white people and particularly her friends who had said or done something racist. She's like, you have to be prepared to lose those people in your life because they may not respond well to it. And that nugget has just continued to bounce around in my head since she said it. And so re-listening to that and hearing this conversation that we had in this larger sort of world of her really interesting life and bad tourist is so good. Um, even though it's just sort of a slice of life of this sort of moment in, in time, it just made me so much more grateful for both of the conversations, the one you're going to hear now and the one that you're not going to hear. Um, and the one she and I are having after I finished the book, um, because again, we just connected so much. It's like, oh yeah, there's, I understand the sort of thematic stuff that's going to be in this book. And I absolutely am going to want to talk about that as just as a fan, right? Just as somebody that's like, okay, I'm going to be that Star Trek nerd. that's like on page 47, you talked about this, like, tell me about it. So I think it makes for an interesting conversation, but I also wanted to frame what you're about to hear. There is a very typical jam interview where you're going to get a snapshot of her life. But there's this other thing that I want you to pay attention to, or that I think is interesting, which is the ways in which we respond to people when we make a mistake, right? When they tell us that we've made a mistake. Um, and that just was, to me, it was such a gift for me re-listening to that conversation because I thought, yeah, yeah, this is not as hard as we make it seem to be. Um, and it really feels so much better to have the conversation where you're like, oh yeah, no, that was wrong. Yep, my bad. So much easier. It's so much nicer. It's so much kinder, which is what we should be doing. So that is my after school special PSA for the day.